As the weather around here is getting more and more like spring, why not take a trip outside to the great out there? Mm. Ashley, out at Apple Hill, you know that means trouble. You're getting a sneak mm. peek at a wine tasting event. <laughs> what are you doing? Usually it's trouble because we would usually be bringing back uh, a lot of calories, right? Mm -hmm. Apple uh, fritters and donuts and such. Yeah. This time it's trouble because we're talking about wine. Very good wine, but Boger Winery in Placerville is one of 22 wineries participating in a big event happening uh, in a couple of weeks, April 22nd and 23rd. A phenomenal two-day event. But we wanted to come out just a little bit early to get a little sneak peek and talk about what to expect. This is Greg Boger, the owner. Greg, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good Hello. to see you. But first of all, the property here is stunning. Again, you guys are just one of 22 wineries participating in this big event. Tell me for you why you are excited to get people up to the area, up to Apple Hill, to enjoy some wine. Well, it's really great to have uh, customers from the Sacramento, from the region, to come up and visit our El Dorado region to realize uh, Napa isn't the only place to visit, but come up to the foothills and see our unique. Uh, a number of wineries we have up here. Yeah, and I think a lot of quite, I think a lot of people probably too, Greg, want to know how the rain and the snow impacted uh, your productivity with the grapevine. Well, we'll know uh, this coming uh, fall when we go to harvest the grapes. But right now, all the prospects look good. We've yeah. got plenty of water for irrigation this year, uh, plenty of chill hours for the dormancy of the vines. So we're, we uh, look for a positive uh, year yeah. this year. We, we needed this water, and it's good to get Which it. Which is so good. And then, of course, people could come out on April 22nd and 23rd for a two-day event. Uh, tell me your name. I'm Julianne. I'm Julianne. So you are pouring for us this morning. Here's the thing. We can't do a wine segment without pouring and maybe doing a little tasting. But let's talk about what you're pouring for us this morning. So this is our Pinot Grande. It is a white Pinot Noir. It's made with red grapes. Greg's going to talk to you a little bit about what makes it white. Okay. Well, th these are, this is a white wine made out of red grapes. Okay. Um, we, we, we take a Pinot Noir, a red Pinot Noir, and uh, press the... Um, Press the juice out of it and leave the skins behind, and it comes out uh, white. And uh, so it's it's a it's a unique uh, wine. Uh, has characteristics of red uh, of red wine, but without the that color. That is so unique. I have not heard of that. And I think what's so really great about this experience on April 22nd, while this is something that you all consistently have, you're going to be able to enjoy a different variety, something that's unique to every winery that's participating. Yes, all the wineries will have some unique. Uh, uh, varieties that they're pouring to, to show what they can do as well as what our region can Got do. It. Now I just yeah. saw you pour something. Is this new? Something different or is it the same it's thing? The same thing. I thought thing. you okay. might want to try. So it. What I'm going to do is just for the sake, Greg, of not trying on air, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over the glass of wine to Claire and Rebecca. All right, well, I just, while you guys were talking, I was waving them over. So I want you guys to smell it first and tell me what you think. Oh boy, I'm going to leave this to you, assistant winemaker. Oh, you're the assistant winemaker. I pulled over the right person. Okay. So pretend you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Pretend you're, you are just your average wine person who just likes to indulge every blue moon. What do you smell? It's a very fresh white wine, a very crisp, a nice acidity. Okay, go ahead and taste. I'm going to let you taste too. You, you gave her the floor, but what do you think? Get like some tropical notes, maybe a little bit of banana. Oh, nice, nice acidity, very crisp, nice spring wine. Oh, banana. No, what did you think of that? Uh, absolutely correct. Yes. <laughs> very nice. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, don't worry, she's very experienced. She knows what she's talking about. Okay. Uh, very nice lingering finish, and yes, just a really nice yeah. spring wine. And um, yeah, and unlike red wine, you could have uh, glasses of that, and your teeth won't get stained. So I think you guys did a good job there. Uh, hey, we do have to wrap it up, but next hour, Greg, we're going to get a chance to go outside to your historic cellar. I am told it's historic for a reason. What year was that historic mate, or that a cellar? 1872. 1872. So we're going to take you inside that cellar coming up in the next hour. In the meantime, grab that passport. You don't have to jump on a flight Ooh. in order to do so. We'll toss it back to you. Okay. Got to be honest, had no idea you'd find notes of banana in a wine. No. <laughs> No, I didn't. I just had my banana a little while ago. I just smell wine. Did it have a, a note of wine <laughs> in your banana? Hmm. 